good news. There is some good news. Honestly, some good news. At the end of last week, a decision was announced that trans puberty blockers are to be banned in England except for research purposes. Amazing. There's never been any proper studies or research into their effects, even though our children effectively are being drugged up and, well, basically permanently damaging their bodies. Let's talk to Helen Joy. She's author of Trans, When Ideology Meets Reality. She's director of advocacy at the uh, campaign group Sex Matters. Good morning to you, Helen. Hi, Julia. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I mean, your book, uh, I know you've been reissued with a, a new change in the title, but, um, you know, author of trans. This book, for me, was life-changing. You were actually talking to young people who transitioned, um, who were happy about it, who were unhappy about it, and finding out what actually happened at the Tavistock. I know there have been books since, much publicised by the BBC, but actually it was you that were first was one of the people writing about this and exposing what was really going on. Um, most of us thought that... A child being given any drugs must have, you know, that would affect their body, change their body forever, would be a child who's gone through years of counselling, psychological treatment, everything possible to make sure it as a last resort. And then we discovered that the Tavistock, the clinic that was dealing with pretty much all the children who were going through, um, you know, trans issues, they were just handing them out like sweeties. I mean, you'd think that a drug that would change a child's uh, entire life and that would lead to sterility if you go on to cross sex hormones would be something you would only give if the child would die otherwise yeah. not just that they had been through all sorts of testing but that you would actually save it for life-changing situations uh, but no they were missold as a pause button and given out on the grounds that you could just come off them again if you changed your mind but not paying any attention to the way that they locked kids into a trajectory i'm afraid that there's a bit of a loophole here on this it's the nhs that is meant to be only giving them out now in the in the context of research. But there are private doctors who will give a child a diagnosis yeah. of gender dysphoria for 500 quid and three hours on a Zoom call. And then you can go to your own GP and say, could you turn this prescription into an NHS prescription for me? So I'm, I'm really afraid that this is going to have to be watched like a hawk. Otherwise, actually, there will be no change. And this is the really big concern, isn't it? And again, we know that a lot of parents are very desperate and they're sold this lie, as children are... I spoke to a 16-year-old only a few weeks ago who, who used this line to me, and I said this was the most outrageous emotional blackmail. You know, you know, if you don't use my preferred pronouns, you know, what if you upset me so much that I committed suicide? And if I'm not allowed to bind my breasts and go on puberty blockers, you know, wouldn't you rather that I was alive than that I committed suicide? And I pointed out that, in the fact, that actually there's no evidence that actually children who undergo these processes or even people post-transition having full treatment and, you know, chemical treatment treatment um, and also even surgery, that their rates of self-harm and suicide go down. Indeed, it's believed, actually, some studies suggest they go up. There, there is this whole argument, and parents are being sold this by distraught, confused, unhappy children, that if they don't agree to this, their child may kill themselves. And who, which parent at that moment wouldn't go, I don't care, do whatever you have to do to keep my child alive. But, but so they, there are, there they're sold a lie. They're sold a lie. There are two lies being told. One lie is that the child, that it's, you know, a better dead daughter than a live son, mm. that unless you let your child transition, your child will kill themselves. But the other lie that's being told is that you actually can change sex, at least legally, and you will be accepted for the rest mm. of your life as a member of the opposite sex. And so there's this sort of link between the law and medicine, and they cycle into each other. And that's why it's just as important that we clarify in law that sex means sex, yeah. and that somebody who changes their gender does not thereby get the state of the opposite sex because that's the lure that's the thing that's pulling the kids on while the parents are terrified by suicide lies um i mean this is uh, this is the thing um it is you know we've been fighting about this and talking about this for so long and i mean when i realized you know what was what was actually going on and what what was actually happening behind closed doors in these clinics i was absolutely shocked and when i talked to parents about this people who just who you know like you and like me sort of Look, I, w I want children to be safe. I want people to be happy. I couldn't care less what you call yourself or, or what you want to wear or live your best life or whatever makes you happy. Um, but but th there has been, there's just, I think most people are just totally unaware of the fast track process of this. Now, I'm, I'm a generation of parents where, you know, you only give Calpol to your baby if it's absolutely necessary and, you know, half a paracetamol up to the age of 12 or whatever it is. How, how wary we are of giving our children any drugs whatsoever. And then this casual attitude to 
extremely strong drugs that have a huge impact on a child's psychology, their life um, and their bodies. And this was just done without any proper research, continuing even when, you know, there was clear evidence there was there was a lot of damage. But there's even a lot of evidence now about the damage it does to, you know, to, to bones, to, to lots of other aspects of children's development because the, the puberty process is so important for the development of our our, our brains and our bodies. Oh, it's when we turn from being children into being adults. It's when we learn to be independent. It's when we learn to think in long-term ways and to weigh up risks and so on. Interrupting this process is as crazy as it would be if we said to newborn mothers, to new mothers, let's put your child on pause for six weeks so that you can have a rest. I mean, yes, that'd be great. But you'd know instinctively that this is a really important moment when the child is just born. You wouldn't just yeah. put their development on pause like that. Yeah. But I reiterate the important thing is that the law is really clear. And there's a very important debate happening in Westminster Hall today, actually, on what sex means in the Equality Act. And I know these things don't sound connected, but they are totally connected. Because if we can make it clear that no doctor can give you anything, a piece of paper or a diagnosis that turns you legally into a member of the opposite sex, yeah. then we take Take away the lure for children to think that they should go down this path if they're unhappy and so that's just as important as fixing what goes on inside the clinics absolutely and again I, I just think this is going to end up being one of the biggest medical scandals in terms of abuse of children um, I, I know somebody who works at Tavistock uh, is quite nearby me in North London and I said to her three years ago you want to get yourself out of there no one's going to want that on their CV in a few years time and I, I, I really think that is important um, Helen Joyce you've been a fantastic campaigner on this for children uh, director of advocacy at Matters.